What's going on, Fightful friends and fans? I'm Tempest, representing Fightful, of course, today at the All In Media Scrum, and I'm talking to the one and only Nigel McGinnis. Nigel, thank you so much for taking the time to speak nice with us today. Nice to be here, Tempest. Where did you get that name? I came up with it myself. Yeah? I think I got it from, like, a, a Yu-Gi-Oh card or something. It's a Yu-Gi-Oh card. It's a, it's a real nerdy card game for children. Oh, okay. I, that's just, I was looking at it, and I was like, eh, I landed on that name today for a wrestler. And that's where it came there from. There you go. I ended up being the one interviewed today. So, of course, the first question I must ask, you're wrestling on Sunday? No, no, it's not the first person to ask that. But I no, imagine I, not. I will Felt not like I had to. If yes. I didn't, I was failing as an interviewer. Well, indeed, yes. No, I will not be wrestling because uh, Clam Digger Brian Danielson, or Clam Digger Brittle Danielson, as mm -hmm. some people are calling him nowadays, uh, is not on the card, so you know, there's not really any match for me, <laughs> that being the case. Uh, I, I really do believe I'm far better off as a commentator anyway, you know what I mean? I'm so excited for so many of the matches and just to be in that environment where I was 31 years ago, deciding to be a wrestler, it was just uh, it's very heartfelt for me to go back then. Well, there's loads of questions that I want to talk to you about in regards to not only commentary, not only the matches with Danielson and Ring of Honor and all these sorts of things. I will start with the commentary because of the current gig that you've got going on on Collision. What do you think would be the biggest comparables or differences necessarily between doing commentator uh, commentary duties for AEW compared to doing them on NXT? So obviously if you're under the WWE umbrella, there are certain things that you talk about and don't talk about. There's uh, more leeway, more freedom, certainly in AEW, to talk about anything you want. In some ways that's a good thing, in some ways it's not. You know, uh, two different flavors of ice cream, as Al Snow loves to say. And so um, I feel a little bit more artistically able here. Certainly I'm more able to talk about my history in terms of matches that I've had and being a wrestler. It was always a weird dichotomy when I was in WWE because I could sort of vaguely talk about, well, I wrestled this guy, but not, where did you wrestle this guy, <laughs> and et cetera, et cetera, you know what I mean? So that, at the same time, I did force me to try to lean more heavily into strategy and story and other stuff, which has helped me out greatly long term as well. But uh, I love the, the lack of a governor here, you know what I mean? I love the, the, the freedom to just go out there and try different things, certainly. The governor sat right there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you familiar with what a governor is or not? Uh, unfortunately not. I've so not been a, here long enough. So in an engine, yeah. the car engine, there's a sure. thing called a governor. Yes, and I am stops familiar the engine with this, going yes. too fast. Yeah. Whereas the governor is mm. like Ryan Stone. I remember they, they always said they put a, a governor on, uh, on Mick Foley after the Hell in a Cell uh, match because he was going too fast. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I want to talk to you a lot about uh, about Ring of Honor. Mm. Now, Ring of Honor, of course, is in a place where it's owned by Tony Khan. It's under the umbrella of AEW and everything. First of all, in relation to this event that we are going to see on Sunday, yeah. now the Ring of Honor tag titles are going to be defended in Wembley Stadium. Now, that's not a championship necessarily that you would have won in your career, but what do you think of someone who is synonymous with Ring of Honor to see that brand represented on the biggest stage possible in pro wrestling? Yeah, it's huge. And if uh, Adam Cole and MJF win the titles and then are the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions in the main event, that would raise the profile even more. It's always been the problem with Ring of Honor. You know, it's a company that certainly in the early 2000s I don't think there's much of an argument were revolutionizing or evolutioning the evolution is not a word is it oh, we can evolving coin it is a word tempest, evolving the industry um, but there weren't enough eyes on it mm -hmm. you know what I mean and when we had those opportunities to jump to that next level financially for whatever reason it just it just never took off um, it would have been lovely if we'd have, Tony had been around at that point to be able to help us get to that stage, you know. Um, and so now that Tony's on board, we have that opportunity, but because so much time has passed, what was the Ring of Honor style, and again, you can make your arguments, is now pro wrestling style. Yeah, because 100%. so many of the Ring of Honor guys the top guys in the companies, Kevin Steen, Sami Zayn, the list goes on, you know, mm -hmm. everybody took that style and took it everywhere else. And so now it's very hard for Ring of Honor to stand on its own and be different because the ring style is the same as everywhere else. Mm -hmm. So how do you differentiate that? That's the million dollar question. 
I definitely agree. I, you know, I mean, Ring of Honor was always built on classic in-ring wrestling, and the mm. quality of in-ring wrestling has gone up so much over the last few years, the last couple decades especially, that it's difficult to set yourself apart when that yeah. was your brand. But another thing that Ring of Honor was really doing well at that time, in particular when you were there, was the introduction of different styles, whether it be people from Japan with mm. you know, the Takeshi Morishimas, the Kentas coming in, and that I see has very much been an influence on Tony Khan, Ring of Honor, of course, not the first company to bring in outside talent, but to bring in company from whether it be New Japan or elsewhere, DDT, what do you think it says about AEW and Ring of Honor then now when it comes to the vast variety of different styles and vast variety of different characters brought in from so many places? I think it talks about a love and a respect for professional wrestling, the art form and the history. Um, whether you like it or you don't like it, Vince McMahon took pro wrestling and he made it sports entertainment. And it's his vision and for better or for worse, that's the way it is. Whereas AEW and Ring of Honor, I think they're more open to accepting that they are part of the legacy and the history of this industry that has evolved over a hundred years. Mm -hmm. And so that really me, that, 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 that answers your question. Yeah. In regards to you specifically in Ring of Honor, you brought mm -hmm. up his name right off the top. What do you think of when you think of the matches with Brian Danielson that have been so heralded as classics over the last, you know, almost 20 years? Yeah. What do you think of when you think of those matches through today's eyes? Um, I'm very proud. Certainly very proud of those matches. Um, people used to say, what's your favorite matches? And it would never be a match with Brian because A, there was a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. B, there was a lot of physical toil as well. Um, but yeah, I, I was glad that I was able to have matches that still stand up today. And uh, glad that I got the chance to wrestle them. I mean, I, I, you know, I call him a clam digger and you know, I make fun of him for having little girly arms and breaking <laughs> the slightest thing and, you know, taking six months off because he broke one little arm where he's got 205 perfectly normal bones in his body. But ultimately, in my opinion, he is the best wrestler of my generation, or perhaps any generation. Um, why that is the case, I'm not really sure. You can look back to how he grew up, or what made him the person that he is. But I don't think there's anyone that you can put on that level in terms of having great matches with absolutely everybody he gets in the ring with, maybe a Kurt Angle. Um, you know, there are certainly some other people who might be in the conversation, but obviously I'm I'm biased because uh, you know, my best matches were well, we'll with Yeah. Now before I let you go, there are a few quick, more rapid fire questions mm. I would like to ask you. Definitely. Number one, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the name Desmond Wolf? <laughs> um, spinal Tap, not Spinal Tap, uh, With Now and I. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's where you got the name from, but mm. yeah, yeah. Very good. Number two, walk me through your iconic hairdo. Where did the thought process come in? Where did that come from? I, it had to be, there was a World Cup, wasn't there, where all the football players, Gascoigne was doing that, right? They were all getting mm -hmm. that blonde top like that. And then I was thinking, being a British wrestler, what's these British stereotypes, these icons, and obviously Billy Idol was one of them. Mm -hmm. So I think I kind of melded those two things together and uh, stuck with it far too long. <laughs> And the last question I'll ask you, the one I've been most excited to, to ask about, mm. where did Nigel McGuinness learn magic and illusions? So the very first trick I learned when I was at high school uh, was a friend of mine who showed me a very simple trick and I was so blown away, I paid him five pounds to show me how to do the trick. And then uh, I, just, I just started, when I started going to Japan, and the sponsors would take you out a lot after the shows. Mm -hmm. well, sometimes you'd be sat there for two or three hours, didn't speak the language. Sometimes I didn't really want to eat the food because it was still moving, you know? <laughs> so I'd have a deck of cards and whenever the, you know, the squiggly food came along, I'd pass it off to someone else and take the cards out and do a little trick. And then um, after I got divorced and wanted to impress girls, <laughs> I've already got into it much more, you know. I mean, let's be honest, why do you do anything in life for girls? <laughs> well, thank you very much, Nigel. I greatly appreciate your time. You're welcome, Tempest. Thank you very much.
very much. Thank you all for watching. Make sure, of course, that you check out AEW all in on signal? Sunday. Do you have a ten-piece hand signal? Or no? Ooh. Do one. Ooh, it's hard to come up with something like that right off the top of your head. But how about, it's not for this, that's close, it's pretty good. How about for the, the people that know, I'll just say, jam that jam. That's a wrestle talk thing. Is it? I've often talked about uh, how much of a pay-per-view buyer I am. Take that any way you want it. But I'll tell you how I take it. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Fastest VPN on the planet. Global server network. All that good stuff. That's great. But a big, big reason why I got NordVPN.com slash Fightful is all the pay-per-views I buy. All the money we're spending. We're trying to control costs as a company, as a household. You can get those UFC pay-per-views at a fraction of the price you're paying here in America. Plus, you can get all kinds of great content that you wouldn't normally see thanks to those services as well. Uh, shows that are on overseas services, things that you want to watch a little bit early so you, so you get on that UK time and watch them. Being able to change the interfaces of things like the WWE Network, maybe you don't like Peacock, anything like that. NordVPN.com slash Fightful gives you that ability while having the fastest VPN on the planet. Also, you just get so much more out of your internet experience with NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Uh, subscribe to, to Fight and AEW Plus. Watch AEW without commercials. Uh, watch Bare Knuckle Boxing. Watch UFC pay-per-views, boxing pay-per-views at the rates they're getting over in the UK. Change your virtual location with just one click. And hey, if you need any help using it, they got that 24-7 tech support. NordVPN.com slash Fightful.